What's up guys, so today I've got an exciting review for you. I'm really hyped to try this out. This is a package that Thermal Master sent me in order to review their P3 thermal camera. I've had the P2 Pro for a little while now with the macro lens, and this thing has served me really, really well as you guys have seen in my previous videos. I bought this thing for like 300 or $400 a few years ago, and it's really paid itself off many, many times over. So full disclosure, I did not buy this particular one. Thermal Master sent me this for a review. But I'm gonna be completely honest about all of my thoughts about this thermal camera. We're going to try it out with the computer. We'll try it out with the phone. So let's get this thing opened up here and give it a shot. All right, so here it is. It's the P3 and it has this cool like focus ring, which I'm excited to try out. I haven't had a thermal camera with a focus ring yet. So it doesn't have a macro lens like this one does, but with the focus ring, we should be able to get down really, really close, which removes the need for the macro lens. So let's see if that is actually the case. Let's get this thing open up. Oh, it comes in this nice little hard case, it looks like. Let's see what's in here. Got a little warranty card and an absolute book of a manual here. <laughs> this must be multiple languages. And yeah, it's a bunch of different languages. It looks like the actual manual is only about 13 pages long, so pretty reasonable. I'm assuming this is going to be the USB-C cable. And yeah, that appears to be the case. And I'm really happy they included this little USB-C to USB-A adapter. I'm definitely gonna be using this because I have the USB-A little extension cable that I'm gonna be using it with. So that's a really nice touch that they include that on the cable. So you don't have to like buy one. You can see here, I had to buy one separately for the P2 Pro here. But yeah, this is just a little female USB-C cable to male USB-C and then has the USB-A adapter, which is super nice. And here is the thermal camera itself. I love this little hard case. Honestly, much nicer than this little bag that the P2 Pro came in. And here it is. Ooh, this looks really nice. So here's the camera. It comes with something else too. Oh, cool. There's an adapter for USB-C to the lightning cable. So I did not realize this, but maybe there's only one version of this thing because this little adapter alone completely removes the need to buy the iPhone version. With the P2 Pro, you could not use the iPhone version with the computer, which is why I got the USB-C, even though I actually do have an iPhone. So it's really nice to see that they sort of consolidated this to work on both in one device. And we've got a little label here. And this is the little focus ring. Ooh, it really feels super nice to, to turn. It has like a lot of resistance to it and it turns very smoothly. This thing definitely feels like nice build quality. It definitely seems to have a pretty wide focus range. I'm excited to see sort of how far and how close we can go with this thing. All right, so I got the PC software open here and we can see the P3 showing up right here and it's currently in Chinese, so we just have to switch this to English. Here we go, double click. Yeah, there we go. So this connects to the thermal camera. So you can see my hand there, and I'm just gonna turn the focus wheel until we're in focus, so it looks pretty nice. We also have different color palettes you can mess around with. I really like this one here. So here's a Switch motherboard. I noticed that their computer software does not have their sort of super resolution option like the phone software does. So next we're gonna try out the phone, which should look significantly better than this with their software enhancement. But yeah, I mean, honestly, this looks already better to me than the P2 Pro on my computer. This software was a little bit buggy for me at first, especially with my recording setup. So I reached out to them and their development team is currently working on fixes apparently for those issues. So hopefully they'll come up with updates in the future for this software. But for now, I think the phone software is going to be a little bit better to use, especially with that enhanced resolution feature. But what I will say is that this camera doesn't flash for me like my p2 pro does so let me just disconnect from this and let me connect to my p2 pro and i'll show you what i mean i don't know if you can see that but here's my p2 pro and you can see it's like sort of flashing like that you can see this is like flashing a bunch for me this doesn't happen on the app but i'm glad to see that this issue is not occurring with the p3 camera at least so again we'll just switch back to the p3 here and you can see it is a little bit clearer the image especially because i can use that focus ring to get a nice focus on the board. But yeah, let's go test this out with the app instead and see if we can get an even clearer image than this. I got the Thermal Master app on my phone here and let's plug this thing in. I've got a iPhone 12, so I still have this. Cool, so I just detected it. We'll go into the camera and let's zoom in on this. All right, and right away, honestly, the quality of this is so much better. I don't know if you can see that, but it's super clear compared to the computer. And you can see by default, the all option is on. So we're getting all of those like little high and low readings. Already the software is, is much nicer to, to look at and use. Man, that is like super detailed, honestly, compared to the computer. So I got my Android here and I figured we do a little comparison of the P3 
to the P2 Pro on the phone. So I wanted to do both of these cameras here justice. I'm gonna take actual video from the devices themselves and show you the actual video instead of just seeing the phone screen. So I got the P2 Pro on the Android here and we have the P3 with the adapter on the iPhone. Obviously with the newer iPhone models, you won't need this adapter cause it's just USB-C. So we're gonna do some comparisons between these two. We're gonna check how close we can get up to the PCB without going out of focus. So that would be the macro lens here versus the little focus ring. So let's start out with the P2 Pro, which I am used to using. So we're gonna click the camera here. I've got this little donor switchboard on three here. All right, so here is the P2 Pro. And you can see this is about how close I can get with the macro lens. If I go any closer here, it's gonna start getting blurry. We've got like the whole SOC in the frame there essentially. So again, if I go a little closer than the SOC, it's going to start getting blurry. And if I take the macro lens off, this is about the focus distance I can go. I mean, like I can keep going farther back. You can see my power supply for my iron and my multimeter up here, my screens and stuff. So like without the macro lens, it's sort of just like is somewhat in focus all the time, but it's definitely not like in focus a ton. And let's actually try enabling the software enhancement. I don't know if that works. Okay, it's very laggy on here. I don't, that might honestly just be my Android phone. So take that with a grain of salt. I think that's just my crappy Android phone doing its best to keep up, but it does actually allow you to enable the software sort of like resolution enhancement. If I turn that off, that goes away. You can see that. Looks like we can kind of zoom in a little bit digitally by pinching on the screen. Anyways, that is the P2 Pro. So let's switch over to the P3 now and see the difference in quality. All right, so here is the P3. I think we can actually zoom in a tiny bit more. I can actually get this in focus and I'm a little bit further in than I was with the P2 Pro. It's certainly not worse in any way than the macro lens. I would say it's actually a little bit better. To get this close, I would say I'm about like a two finger width away from the, the PCB with the camera. And let me check with the other one quick. Yeah, about the same distance away to get the same like focus on the components. So yeah, you're definitely not gonna be missing the macro lens with this because it definitely works just as well. And zooming out here, you can see it's a little bit more sharp because you can actually like turn the focus wheel to be like perfectly focused for the distance that you're you're pulling away from the board. With this one, you can kind of like adjust everything perfectly into focus, it seems. So it's just kind of like a different way of doing things. The little focus ring versus, you know, having a macro lens. I can go like pretty far back. You can see my Xbox under there <laughs> and things will still stay in focus. But you do have to sort of stay on top of the little focus ring. As you get closer and closer to the devices, you have to kind of keep adjusting the, the focus wheel. But it is nice that you can be in focus like in a mid-range point like this. Whereas with the P2 Pro, I'll just show you on this camera for a second here. We can see you have the macro lens, but if I take it off, you know, everything's out of focus for a while until about like here. Here, it's like pretty blurry. You don't get this like middle range focus area. You, you can only be like super close or, you know, farther away. And then there you go, we're in focus again. So you don't have like the range in between, which you kind of do get actually when you're using this because of that focus wheel, we can always just adjust no matter how far away from the device we are. So yeah, something to take into account. I would say I actually do prefer this like focus ring as opposed to the macro lens because I'm always having to grab the macro lens and it's magnetic so it always like picks up screws. So I do kind of like the focus ring over the macro lens to be honest. It is a little bit more of a chore I would say, but if I'm being honest, like I'm not really ever going to adjust the focus like past about, you know, here maybe, which is just like two tiny turns away focus wise. It's not like I'm having to crank the thing a ton in between here and here. It's just like two turns. I would say most of the time I'm going to be using it like this, like fully zoomed in, you know, unless I'm looking for like a larger heat spot on the, on the board and I'll be zoomed out a little bit more. So anyways, I also did just want to mention that I just realized you can just use it with the wire. So I did realize that it makes a lot more sense to just set this up this way. And then you'll be able to just like maneuver this around a little bit easier and it is easier to adjust the focus on it while you're holding just the device versus like the phone and the device. So this is a much, much better way of doing things. I also did manage to find a way to pipe this from my phone into OBS here, which is super nice. 
And I'm realizing I should have done this a long time ago because just the quality of this app compared to the PC software, is just like night and day especially with like the software enhancement for the quality. It really makes a huge difference compared to my old thermal camera with the PC software. It certainly has nothing on the, the mobile app here. So hopefully they come out with some sort of like better PC software. I think that would be my main complaint about both this camera and the other camera. But otherwise, I'm happy I found a solution with my phone at least. There's the comparison between the two. So you can see actually these are both in focus and they're both exactly the same distance away from the PCB. You can actually see on the camera that the one on the left does look, you know, cleaner. It's not as grainy as the P2 Pro. Part of that is the software enhancement. If I turn that on here, let's see if we get a cleaner image. Again, try to ignore the, the lagginess. I know it's, it's kind of difficult. But yeah, right there, you can see like the left hand one is honestly just still a little nicer. I think it just does a little bit better with the software enhancement uh, versus this one here. So anyways, I honestly really like both of these thermal cameras. The P2 Pro is a little bit nicer for like if you're changing distances a lot, because with this one, you have to change the focus uh, with the wheel. But honestly, for the stuff I'm doing with PCBs, I really, really like the focus ring and it allows me to be in focus regardless of the distance away from the board that I am. And I don't have to actually turn it all that much because I'm only ever really going from here to like here. Not to mention that the software enhancement does seem to work a bit better with the P3 versus the P2 Pro. Uh, and the image just overall looks a little bit cleaner on this one than this one. Uh, again, it's important to note that they both have the same actual resolution on them. You can actually see on their site here a comparison between the P2 Pro and the P3. So they both have a similar accuracy, plus or minus two Celsius. It mentions the manual focus versus the macro lens, like we just talked about. We also have a PCB leakage rating here. The lower current is, is better just in terms of like electrical efficiency, I believe. I don't know that this is actually going to contribute to any kind of better image or anything. But the net D here stands for noise equivalent temperature difference. And this is like the smallest temperature difference that the thermal camera can detect. So this is not accuracy. This is not like how accurate the temperature readings are. It's more of like the smallest difference in temperature that it can it can detect. So this is measured in millikelvins and the 35 millikelvins here is just saying that it's like the most sensitive versus the 40 millikelvin temperature difference that the P2 and the P2 Pro can sense. So this is just going to give you a clear, more detailed thermal image like we saw on our tests. And this rating right here is going to impact the image significantly more than the other ratings here, whereas the accuracy here is again, just the actual accuracy of the camera as a whole it has less to do with the actual like imaging, let's say it's more like those readings that we're seeing on the app for the different temperatures are going to be potentially off by upwards of two degrees Celsius. And right now on their site, the P3 is about 300 US dollars and the P2 Pro is about 270. So it's really just like an extra $30 for the P3. And I would say, to be honest, the little increase in image quality is nice to have for this kind of work. Is it necessary? No, not by any means. But you know that, the fact that it has a bit of a nicer case that comes with, uh, the fact that if you wanna use it with your phone, that for this one, you don't have to pick between iOS and Android versus the P2 Pro where you do have to choose between them. I've heard that you can't use the iOS one with the computer, whereas you don't have to worry about that with this one. You can just grab the one that works with all of the devices. So that may be a plus for some people. Oh, and just so you know, I did try using this with the iPhone adapter because I've never been able to use this with the iPhone. Um, but unfortunately, you can see when I plug this in, it says a little notice here cannot use accessory USB camera. This accessory requires too much power. But yeah, I did want to just point that out that you cannot use this, at least the one I have with the with the adapter. And I really like the hard case. I don't know actually what this comes with nowadays. I think I've seen a few different versions of the packaging of it, but I got mine a little while ago and it came with this little drawstring bag, which is not too bad, but I do definitely prefer, especially for something this expensive, having a nice hard case for it. So I like the fact that it came with the hard case. And I really do like that the female USB-C cable it came with has this little adapter for USB-A as well. So yeah, overall, I would say definitely some welcome improvements, especially with the little improvements in quality with this guy. I'm definitely gonna be using this one in future videos. So you guys will get to see this thing in action for actual repairs. But otherwise, I appreciate you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.